Hello, and welcome to 13.1 Electromagnetic Induction. This is the start of the very last chapter of the unit, and it picks up where chapter 12 left off. Now first off, we need to understand what induction is. Induction is when one action causes another action. So we're trying to see if we can induce electromagnetism. In chapter 12, we saw that current can cause a magnetic field. Or we could say that current induces a magnetic field. But the, the question in chapter 13 is the other way around. Can we take magnets Can magnets induce an electric current? That's our question here. And the simple answer is, if the magnet is stationary, which means it's not moving, then the answer is no. There you go. Simple answer. No, if a magnet's not moving, we will not get an electric current by putting a wire near it. Which hopefully makes sense that if we have a magnet and we put it near a wire, we don't just magically get electricity out of it. If we did, then the, el uh, the energy crisis would be solved. We could just generate infinite energy by putting a magnet near a wire. So if the magnet's not moving, we don't get electricity. But if we move the magnet, then yes. Yes, we get electricity if we move the magnet near a wire. And this was proved by a guy named Michael Faraday in the year 1831. This was an exciting time for electricity. And Faraday, we're going to see his name a few times, he's a very, very important player here. So, our law of electromagnetic induction says that any any change in the magnetic field near a straight conductor, or in fact, let's just say near a conductor, induces a voltage And if we have a voltage, I'm going to say and a current, because we can't have one without the other, in the conductor. There we go. That's our law of electromagnetic induction. If we change the magnetic field near a conductor, we get voltage and current in it. Okay, Faraday demonstrated this idea using what he called his Faraday's ring. And there's a picture of the Faraday's ring down here below. You can see that we have electricity being generated here, sent through the circuit. It goes through this coil. And you all know that if we send current through a coil, we're going to induce a magnetic field. We can use our right hand rule. We see that the current is going this way, this way, this way. We wrap our fingers. It means we get a north pole doing something like this. Now notice that this, this is actually curved, so we're going to get a sort of a funny shaped magnetic field. And in fact, this magnetic field is going to go all the way through and it's going to induce a current in this loop of wire on the other side. So let's talk about this. I'm going to fill out the box about Faraday's ring. What we have here is current in the left loop induces a magnetic field which induces a current in the right loop.
Now hang on a second. I set up here that the magnetic field needs to be changing. If I just run electricity through this, we'll get a steady magnetic field. So then we're only going to get current over here when the magnetic field changes. Which means that we're only going to get current when we first turn this circuit on, when we close this, and when we open it again to turn it off. So each time we turn this circuit on or when we turn it off, then we'll get current over here. Otherwise, actually, there will be no electricity on the other side. So we're going to finish this sentence up here. Induces a current in the right loop when it changes. When it changes. Which we mean when the left circuit is turned on or off. There we go. That's how our Faraday's ring works. Now in this chapter, we're going to be building up to an idea called alternating current. If you know anything about alternating current, you know that it means that we sort of push the electrons and then pull them and push and pull so that we're not going in a constant forward direction. And you can imagine there that the magnetic field will automatically be constantly changing in AC, which means that we're going to have a constantly changing magnetic field, which means we're going to get a constant induction on the other side. So we're building up to that in this chapter, and you'll see that in around 13.4 or 13.5. Okay. A couple of factors down here that affect the induction, that affects how strong the, the induction is going to be. So, number one, coiled conductors. Well, if you coil your conductor, coils increase the current. So if we have coils, instead of just having a straight wire, the coils will make it get more current versus a straight conductor. So step one, if you want to get lots of electricity, a lot of current out of a magnetic field, coil your wire up. Step two, number of loops. If you increase the number of loops, you increase the current. Perfect. Change in magnetic field. The faster we change the field, the faster change in field, this will increase the current. Perfect. And last one here, magnetic field strength. Well, stronger field, again, is going to give more current. So all of these things are going to increase the current. Now remember we do have a relationship between current and voltage. We're going to be seeing exactly how that um, relationship plays in the rest of the chapter. Okay. Last step here, there's a lot of cool applications of this principle where we can just run electricity through one circuit, and it's not touching the other one, but we get electricity through the other one. It's a actually a very important, a very powerful idea that's used all the time here are a few that you might have seen in your household. Number one here, induction cooking. This is where you have a stove top that heats the metal pots by induction. The neat thing about these is that they don't actually get hot. If you put your hand on this element, you won't burn yourself. This is the sort of stove where you have a glass top and um, and there's no actual metal coils involved. So what we're doing is we're actually just inducing a current in the pot, and the current in the pot makes it heat up, and that's what uh, causes the heat to transfer. So those are pretty handy. They're very fast, they're very efficient, they're, um, they're better in a lot of ways than traditional stovetops. Another one, metal detectors. If you're on the beach searching for metal, or if you go through the airport, well, what they do is they these detect induced currents. So they have a strong magnetic field and they detect if any current was induced inside of that field. And if there was, then there must be some metal. 
Last one, induction chargers. If you have your cell phone and instead of plugging in your cell phone to charge it, charge it, you might have something where you can just throw it on a surface and it'll start charging without anything being connected. It's a very cool technology and it uses induction as well. So here we have coils, coils in the charger. and in the device and like I said these can be used in cell phones so there we go that's the start of electromagnetic induction and we're going to do a few cool things in this chapter that's all enjoy the uh, homework problems there and see you in the next lesson